Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK. Welcome to my channel, and this is the lighter side of Black Bright, and I'm talking about Love Island, part 24 already. We've only got about a week and a half left, and then it's all done and dusted. So I just wanted to talk about today, basically, you know, we've had the um, repercussions from the headlines, and it's amazing how public opinion can sway your feelings that you have for someone and how you're more likely to listen to the headlines which you know are very rarely true and they kind of manipulate you and they're designed to, for sensationalism and you will take those headlines and um, have a fallout with your partner because of them. Now I think each one of the couples handled the grievance very well except for Finn because Finn was not honest. I've got a funny feeling it's going to come out. I mean, he's saying his head didn't turn and he said, OK, he said, I wasn't disrespectful to you, to Paige. But he told Molly flat out, you know, my head will turn for you. I, you know, I would really, you know, I'd, I'd choose you over Paige. That's what he more or less said. If she hadn't gone for Callum, Paige wouldn't have Finn. So I've got a funny feeling that's going to come out. It might not. He might be lucky. I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm oh, so happy with the way that Shanice and Luke T handled that situation. I mean, yes, yeah, she was a bit stroppy, but he handled it like a man. He was so calm. He listened. He acknowledged that he'd made a mistake and he apologised. You can't ask for more than that. And then in the diary room, he says, oh, he likes that. He likes to be put in his place a little bit. I think that is, that is I told you, that boy is a man. He might not know he's a man, but he's a man. So I'm really happy with that outcome. So yes, Luke T and Shanice, they're back on track. Now I've written out my notes to remind me. Um, I think we've got a couple of codependents in there. I don't know if you've noticed it, but I'll talk about that later. Um, we've got Mike and Priscilla. She now feels as though she's got to be a badass because he's um, because he's considered a player, but. You know, she better hope that they don't bring any new women in there because if she starts paying hard to get, I mean, he already looked like he can't be bothered to work it. <laughs> Mike's a trip. Because he looks like when she was saying, when she said, oh, uh, he don't want to kiss her, it's like he looks at her as if to say, bloody hell, I don't really fancy working at this. And he ain't going to want to work it because he ain't really that interested. It's true. He's not that interested. I think he thinks, I think he's going for the easy option. He doesn't really want to work. When he's made a mistake, and that's what happened with Jess, he made a mistake with Jess by going for Leanne. And so he knew that if he went back to Jess, he's going to have to work hard. And he don't want to work hard. He doesn't want to work for the relationship. And it's the same with Priscilla. He's been caught out and now... She's going to give him a hard time. He don't want to do that. He, he's going to look for an excuse. You watch. He's going to get out of that one. Because he ain't going to be grafting. <laughs> he ain't going to be grafting at all. Psst. Must be bloody joking. Police officer graft. Are you having a laugh? <laughs> okay, and then we've got Molly and Callum. What does she mean by he, he at least he put a full sentence together? That's a bit condescending, don't you think? I mean, I know he's a bit of a ditherer, but you know, he can be quite assertive. I'm not quite sure if I like that remark. And I'm not quite convinced with Molly either. I'm not quite convinced with her feelings. But there again, what she says in the diary room, I don't know. It's really hard to tell because if you go by their actions, you, that to me, tells me more than what they say. And when I was looking at Molly, and I mean, okay, she was given a bit of a hard time because he was saying, they, that the media was saying that he's going to cheat. But she should know that if he 
he's never had a proper girlfriend, how would they know he's going to cheat? So, you know, they don't use their common sense. And the way he handled it was really, really good. And I like the way the men won over the women because they they did use, well, they, well, I don't know if they said what the women wanted them to hear, but I, except for Mike, I think his, his response was a bit corny. They all seem to be digging out Mike. I don't mean to, but anyway. So with Callum, he... He definitely said, he definitely was coming from a sincere place. And I picked that up. So, but I'm still not sure about Molly. Still not convinced that she really likes Callum. So we'll have to see about that. Um, what else have we got? Shauna breathing heavy after Luke M. Now, you know, yesterday I was saying that I, I didn't understand why she was looking at Luke M instead of Jamie, who's all together and, you know, attractive. And I've worked out that I believe she is codependent because, I wrote down some notes here, actually, because the thing is with Jamie is that he doesn't need rescuing. And I think she's underestimated Luke M. I think she thinks Luke M, because he's been abandoned or rejected or whatever you call it um by two women or is it three i think it's just two i think she believes that she that he needs rescuing and that she can be his caretaker but she underestimates luke because luke is very strong and unless he has narcissistic qualities and will bounce off of her then we're going to see the reason why she doesn't like Jamie. Well, we're going to see the reason why she likes Luke M. Because I think she's kind of feeling him out to see how he's going to come over. Because remember, she had that real victim mentality when everything was, oh, it always happens to me, always happens to me. She was obsessed with Callum. She was the one that was always offering advice, even though he didn't ask for it. She has to feel needed. And the thing is, is that when you're codependent, you think you want that individual person. So when Callum went with Molly, she was um, kind of guilt throwing and stuff. And it was though she was um, pining after Callum. But what she was actually doing was pining over what Callum represents which is, I mean, he was giving her validation, wasn't he, in the house? He was showing her a little affection, and that is what she was seeking. And that is why, you know, when people are codependent, and they depend on somebody to feed them emotionally, well, they don't even need to be fed emotionally. All they need to know is that they can serve and go overboard. And that's what codependents tend to do. They tend to go overboard. And so, and when that, and then when they go overboard and it, and it's not um, reciprocated, then they get a bit resentful and they get bitter, which to me is how she was operating when she broke up with Callum. And the only reason I'm bringing it up is because now she switched to Luke M. And people would say in the real world is that, you know, if you like somebody else so much, how can you switch to somebody else that quick? But what happens is, if you are codependent, you are going to switch to somebody who can give you what the other person was giving you. So it's not really about the individual. So even though she thought it was Callum, it wasn't. It was the feelings, like I said, you know, the affection, the te well. Yeah, he was quite tender. The kisses and the hugs and stuff. So now she thinks she can get that from Luke M. I think Luke M, when Luke M looks at her as if he's like, God, I don't know what you're thinking. But I can't, I can think I can read him. But I don't know if I can read him or whether I'm reading him correctly. Because how I read Luke M, when she told him that, yes, he was shocked. And he didn't think she liked him like that. But I don't think he's attracted to her. Even though she's young, a year younger, she comes over as though she's much older. And I think she's a bit too chunky for him. I think, I think he prefers 
Well, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens tomorrow. But I don't think um, Luke M is going to give her what she wants, what Shauna wants. I think she's underestimated him. And did you see those? He's got photographs of himself all over his bloody um, phone. I hope he's not a bloody narcissist because you know why I say that? Because he said he's not going to give up on um, Shauna because Demi never gave up on Jamie. Jamie, um, De Demi continued to want to get to know Jamie. So it's almost like it was spite. And the way he called her, he called um, Shauna over in front of Demi as if to say, you know what I mean? So he might have some narcissistic qualities. And I think Demi's, sorry, I think Demi is codependent as well because the way she's going on like with that victim mentality and now she's coming, she doesn't even know whether she's coming or going. So it was just an observation. I could be wrong. Um, what else did I want to say about tonight? Uh, Shauna, yeah, she's, oh yeah, and another reason why I thought she, um, she's misreading the sign Shauna is, because she says she feels sorry for Luke M. Have you noticed that even though the, the women were, um, you know, kind of pieing Luke M, I don't get the feeling that it was, I mean, apart from his ego, I don't think he was too damaged by it. I just think he, there's a, there's a coolness about Luke M. So I'm not quite sure where that's coming from, but we'll see what's happening. I, I'm going to be looking at this because I'm going to be looking at Love Island with different eyes. I'm going to be looking at Love Island over the next couple of days to see if there's that narcissistic codependent dynamic going on between Luke M, Demi and Shauna. I'm just going to be curious because it's something that came to my head today and I said, yeah, I think so. But I haven't got my teeth into it yet because I haven't got enough examples. But I'm just throwing it out there. Um, let me see what else have I got here. Hmm. Do you think they'll repeat, Finn? Oh, yeah. You know when... Finn's carrying Paige down the stairs. Do you think that's a repeat? Or do you think he's actually carrying her down the stairs every single day? I'm, I'm going to have to... I looked, I glimpsed at it today. And I don't know if they had on the same clothes or whatever. Because that will determine whether or not he does it every day. Or whether they just repeat that part of them going up and down the stairs. I don't know if you noticed that. Let me see. Uh, Mike has to grovel. So that he already said that Natalie likes Jamie. Do you think Natalie really likes Jamie, or do you think she's looking for another ticket in the villa? Because she did that, as far as we're concerned, with Luke M. Now, all of a sudden, she's declaring that she likes Jamie. I think Jamie's gonna pick, I think Jamie's gonna pick Demi, and I think Luke T is gonna be forced to go with Shauna. Shame, <laughs> he don't even want Shauna. How embarrassing would that be? And then you know what? She's going to have that victim mentality again. And she goes, oh, why does it always happen to me? Why does it all? She should read the bloody signs. Because she said she couldn't read it. If he was interested in her, he wouldn't have been, oh, oh, you know, my head scrambled. I don't know. I mean, he was literally staring at her as if to say, you bloody mad or what? I don't like you in that way. But she's totally oblivious to it. So if he does if he is forced to choose Shauna because Jamie gets to pick first and picks Demi, then She's going to have problems. And then she's so silly, that Shauna. She's gone and told Jamie, oh, you know, I, you know, I like, I've got my heart with, um, I've got my heart with Luke M. As if Jamie was going to pick her anyway. She should have kept her bloody mouth shut. Now, he's not going to really want to pick her. Oh, I don't know what's wrong with these bloody women. 
because he's not he, he, if he might be forced to pick her depending on who who gets to pick first if jamie gets to pick first i've got a funny feeling he's going to pick demi not natalia he might not though he might pick natalia all depends how he feels that's going to be a dodgy one and then we've got luke m it all depends who he's left with but you know they're going to create some big drama he's probably going to be it's probably going to shut off tomorrow with whether or not he picks shauna or demi hmm I wonder if they're going to surprise us with it. No, they would have told us if they were going to bring some new people in. Can you imagine if they brought new people in? How the dynamics would change again. Okay, let me see. Um, oh, Lou Ken was saying he's not going two feet in with um, Demi because she's already let him down. So I don't know if he's just being cautious or whether he's being spiteful. I can't really tell with him. It's very, very difficult. He's very pleasant, very charming, very nice, but also a bit aloof, also a bit distant. So I, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I'm not quite sure what's going on. We'll have to watch Luke M because I think he might be a bit of a dark horse. And Demi's talking about she wants somebody to love her. And so the, the show must give her a break. I mean, it's her fault. She was getting on with Luke M quite fine. And then she decides to tell him, oh, I'm going to get to know Jamie. What? You see, these women, they open up their mouths too much. They talk too much. Getting to know Jamie, then now Luke M is not going to trust her because anybody else comes in, she's, he's going to think that she's going to flit off. And I really don't think he's attracted to Shauna, but he, I'm not even going to talk too much on that one, him and Shauna. I have to watch and see for myself before I let the cat out of the bag. Uh, what else is there? Um, yeah, I think that's it really. I'm knackered. I'm going to go to my bed, man. Anyway, have a good night. And speak to you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday night and it's the end of the week. So, ciao for now. Bye-bye.